But, you know, once again, we want to welcome all of you to Faith and Victory Church. Do we have any first-time visitors here? If you, if you, oh, we got one, yeah, our friend here. Praise God. Will you please stand and give us your name so everyone, so we can acknowledge you officially. Amen. Taylor, amen. Welcome, Taylor. We are so glad you come to be with us today. She's a friend of my son, Jonathan, and uh, we're so glad to have her with us today. I don't think they knew that I was preaching today, but uh, we're so glad that, that she come out and be with us today. Amen. And to all of you who are regulars, thank you for coming out today. There are other things you could have been doing, amen? But you chose to come and be at church today. And I believe that God has a word for you, amen? amen. Praise God, praise God. So I'm, not, I'm trying to think here if we have any, any pressing announcements that we need to make. Um, Wednesday, of course, we have our uh, Wednesday evening hour of power. Don't miss it. And, of course, it's always... Um, always on um, a Facebook Live. We do it Facebook Live. Um, so if you can't physically be here, you can always catch it uh, on the web, you know, because, you know, these are these are our, our excellent times that Pastor has a, you know, gets intimate in the Word. You know, a lot of times during a Sunday morning service, you can't, you know, it's a different setting on Sunday mornings. But uh, but Wednesday night, G gets a chance to really dig down into that Word, amen. You really get some good, gold, good, some good nuggets, amen. So, don't miss Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. right here over in the in the uh, room uh, right as you come in there. It's right to your left there, the second room there. Um, and avail yourself to such things. And, of course, we are still, we are still, we are still knocking this dead out. Amen? Glory to God. We're continuing to, we're continuing to, uh, to sow towards the debt cancellation. Amen? And, of course, we are knocking this thing out. Uh, where are we at now? What's our, what's our? We're at 24. Okay. Well, it's it's getting it's getting out of here, amen. Because you know we have work to do here. We really do appreciate the fact that we have a place to worship, amen. Um, but at the end of the day, we need our own facilities. We really do, because there are things that we are so limited in our ability to do as a ministry because we don't have our own facilities. You know, if you recall last week, we had our uh, fifth Sunday fellowship, which was great. You know, how many people enjoyed the Fifth Sunday Fellowship we had last week? It was really, really good. You know, we really enjoyed that. You know, but, you know, we had to have it in this room here, you know, versus we had it, you normally have it in the back room over here, which is fine. But, you know, when we have our own facilities and stuff, we have it where we want to have it. Amen? And so, you know, that's why it's, you know, vitally important that we get this debt knocked out so we can go ahead and, uh, get to our own facilities, amen, and, and trust me, trust me, trust me, we know everybody's got obligations, everybody's got obligations, right, who, who doesn't have any obligations, if, you, if you're over the age of 18, you don't have any obligations, I'm considering you, that you probably still live at home with your parents, but anyway, but nevertheless, you know, everybody's got obligations, so this is not, this is not a ploy to, to try to gouge you for your money or anything like that, we're asking you to do what God wants you to do. You pray, you ask the Lord, Lord, what should I do concerning this? And he will tell you what to do, and you do that. That's all you have to do. You pray, ask God, Lord, what you want me to do? Not, not just in today's offering, but going forward. What do you need, what would you want me to do? And you do that. You know, Mary, Mary unlocked the key to miracles in the life of the believer, you know, at the, at the, at the wedding feast. And she told the, the attendant, she said, whatsoever he tell you to do, do it. And immediately after that statement, the corresponding action created the miracle. Amen? And so all you have to realize about that whole deal is that whatever God tells you to do, that's all you're responsible for. Amen? You ain't got to pay my part. Amen? You ain't got to pay the pastor's part. Amen? Unless that's what the Lord told you to do. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Don't be so quiet in this Holy Ghost church. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all, y'all, y'all got some faces for me this morning. But glory to God. We're going we gonna to go ahead and forge right on forward. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we're going to receive our morning's tithes and offerings. You know, this is, this, is, this is the time where you can tap into God's financial plan for your life. Amen. You know, a lot of times people get, get, get choked over that 
ten cent out of a dollar. But nobody here, amen? Amen. Nobody here. Glory to God, because we have received some excellent teaching on giving and receiving and sowing your seed into the kingdom of God, and you will reap a harvest off of your seed sown. Amen? And remember, God loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Glory to God. So, you know, that, that 10 cent out of a dollar, don't let that, don't let that cause you to fumble and, and, and miss your blessing. Amen. Glory to God. Because you, we cannot quantify, you cannot quantify the blessing that's attached to your obedience to doing God's word concerning your finances. Amen. You cannot, you cannot put a dollar figure on what that's worth. Amen. Having the peace in your home. You know, there's, there's so many times when, you know, I realize, Lord brings it back to my remembrance. Things did not go wrong because I am a tither. Amen. You know, because I give that 10 cent out of a dollar, stuff lasts longer. Amen. You know, but see, on the other, other, on the other side of that coin, when you hold your tithe and you say, well, I need this to, to pay my car note. Well, guess what? Not only are you not going to have the money for your car note, but something else going to happen, too. Because, see, you have, you have entered into the curse side of, of, of the financial side of the things of God. You know, the Bible says over in Malachi 3 and 10, you are cursed with a curse. Amen? You don't want that. We want the blessing. Amen? Let's tap into the blessing of God by being obedient and being a cheerful giver. Attach that cheerfulness to it. Amen? Amen. So if you need to offer an envelope, raise your hand. Our, our usher, Joe, here will be happy to give you an envelope. And, of course, if you're giving online, uh, what's the, uh, it's, uh, it's the cash app. If you want to do the cash app, you certainly can, can do that. And all of our viewers online, uh, that information is on the screen in front of you. So you can avail yourself to such things. And we are so glad that you are participating in the financial side of the kingdom of God. Amen. You're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to pray and we're going to receive the offering. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for the, the tithers and the givers. Glory to God. Father, you said, give and it shall be given unto us. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give unto our, bu our bosom. Glory to God. And you said, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, but he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Help us, Lord, to be cheerful in our giving. Help us to be mindful that we are, we are connected to you and you are connected to us. And part of that connection is in our finances. And we just thank you, Father, that there, the finances of the people are increasing more and more. And they're sowing and giving into the things that you have called them to do in Jesus' name. And everybody in the group with that prayer said, amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, and receive this morning's offering. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our uh, children. Uh, I think Sister Shannon is back there ready to minister to the children. Glory to God. Let's point our hands to the, to the youth and uh, to the children as they are leaving. We are expect expect expectating expectating boy i done got a new word together now all right we're expecting god to do a great and mighty work in them father we just thank you for our children glory to god we thank you that they're 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 being ministered to them in a, in 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 a great and mighty way holy spirit we just ask you to touch their hearts touch their minds that they can receive what you have for them and that they'll never be the same they'll never see jail they'll never be assaulted they'll never be uh uh, abused in any way, Father. We just thank you that the Holy Spirit is, is, is covering them and comforting them and guiding them all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you so much once again for coming and being with us this morning. Um, I do believe that the Lord has a word for you this morning. Amen. And uh, we're going to be ministering along the lines of becoming the vessel that God can use. Because we're all becoming something. Amen. As we travel and as we get older, as we, you know, things go on in our lives and we mature, you know, we are becoming something. Amen. But as the children of God, we want to become a vessel that God can use. Amen. 
you know, a lot of times we, uh, we get, you know, into the mundaneness of, you know, day-to-day, the day-to-day grind, glory to God. You just go back and forth, you go to work, and you come home, and you fix dinner, and you, and you go to your ball games and stuff like that, and you have your various activities. All those things are nice and good. But we also want to remember that we are children of God, amen? And God has called us to be light and salt in the earth. And as we are, and, and if, you, if you realize what light does, and if you realize what salt does, salt puts flavor in things. Salt is also a preservative. Amen? When you add salt to something, it makes it better. Amen? So, you know, if you, if, you, if you had a bowl of rice in front of you, you know, and you just try to eat it just the way it is, man, it just tastes, mm, tastes like mush. But, you know, you put a little salt in it, put a little butter in it, you know, maybe throw a little gravy on top of it. Amen. Make it taste like something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I like, I like gravy. I like salt. Glory to God. But salt, salt makes a difference. Amen. And so God wants us to make a difference. Amen. As you are becoming, as you are salt, you are making a difference on the job. You are making a difference doing what you do. Amen. When you when you when you show up at the cash register and that that, you know, the the cashier has had a rough day. They just got cussed out. You know, that happens a lot at Walmart sometimes, you know, for whatever reason. You know, people come in with their attitudes and they just had a bad day or whatever. And they they want to take it out on the cashier who is just trying to do their job. Amen. But if you're that cashier, glory to God, you know, you wouldn't want to get cussed out. Amen. Well, praise God, you can be the person that's light and salt. Glory to God. You can tell that cashier, hey, sweetheart, don't worry about that. I, I know, but don't worry about that. You know, you know God loves you, you know, and that could be just the thing that that person needs at that time. Amen. To, to, to encourage them, you know, to not lose it, to not go postal. Cause going postal is bad. You know, not n- no slight against the U.S. Postal Service, but. That, that connotation came, came because of something. Amen. But nevertheless, we want to be light and salt in the earth. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? Praise God. So we're talking about becoming a vessel that God can use. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to jump right in this thing. Glory to God. We're going to expect the Holy Ghost to take over. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We want you to come in in a great, mighty way. We want to hear from you. Father, I yield myself right now so that you can use me however you see fit. Father, I thank you that you're speaking through my lips. You're processing thoughts through my mind. You are ministering to the needs of your people, whatever they are. We thank you that the needs of this house is being met. Glory to God, whether it be financial, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, whatever's going on right now, Father, we thank you that you can address Every single individual need as you see fit, glory to God. And Father, we just thank you right now, and we just praise you in advance for all the things that will be wrought in our midst, glory to God, and we just invite you to do what you want to do in Jesus' name. And anybody, everybody in agreement with that prayer said, amen. amen, glory to God. So if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and start off here in Luke 4 and 18. Praise the Lord. We're going to start off over here in Luke 4 and 18. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you didn't bring a Bible, say oh me. Or scoot over next to somebody that's got one. Glory to God. Because you know what? We are in church. And it would be bad if you in church and you can't see the word. Amen. But we do have, we do have it on the screen as well. Luke 4 and 18. Uh, we'll start off here. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, the Lord wanted me to share this particular scripture because this is Jesus speaking and He wanted me to share with you what's about to take place. We want you to have your expectations up that the Lord is going to speak to you through me. Amen. 
I know, I know I'm standing here, you know me as Jeff Gill, yada, yada, yada. But in conjunction with that, I am being used by the Holy Spirit to speak a word to you. And your expectation of God's ability to speak through me is going to determine how much you're going to be able to get out of today's sermon, message, word, whatever you want to call it. Amen? So I want you to have your expectations high. I want you to reach out with your spiritual understanding and say, Lord, speak to me those things that you want me to know. Amen? And, 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 and as, you're pulling, as you're pulling, the Lord will steer me where, you need, where he wants me to go concerning you. Amen? How many in agreement with that? Amen? Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles 20 and 20. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And so this, this word that the Lord has birthed in my heart concerning becoming a vessel that God can use came out of uh, the trip that we we just uh, went to win a Bible uh, back in February, and the Lord spoke spoke a word in my heart concerning that uh, that trip and and this word that He was placing in my heart concerning that time. I said, and He said this to me. He said, you know, in the spirit, I I heard the Lord saying, "Bring your cup, open up your spirit." And present it up before me. Behold, I'm desiring to do a new work in you. You've been long in your trials and in, in, in your adversities. And you have become worn. You've been broken in places. And I'm about to do a new thing. And I am reforming you. I am reshaping you. I am enlarging your capability to hold more. I'm going to make you able to stay hotter longer. I'm putting better insulation between you and the world. You're not going to be so easily affected by things that go on in the world. You know, there's so many times we watch the news and, you know, the Democrats are doing this and the Republicans are doing this and, you know, this group over here is, you know, making a noise. And you, you've got so many different voices in the world. But the Lord's saying, I'm going to insulate you. Make it, make it easier, for, make it harder for those things to affect you. Let me see this cup right here. You see this coffee cup right here? This is my favorite coffee cup. I use it all the time. It's, it's been dropped. It's been, you know... Uh, washed in the dishwasher, starting to peel a little bit, and you know they said that if I send it back, they'll send me another one. But I, it, it still keeps my coffee hot, and it uh, does what I need for it to do. It's not leaking or anything like that, especially when I close the lid on it. So, but you know, uh, you know, uh, a, a leak proof a leak proof cup only works if you close it. I've had this happen, you know. So you know, it's 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 really good. When it's closed. But if you don't close it, it, what good is it? It's just like any other cup. You know, it's just going to spill out. But, you know, he says, I, the Lord spoke this word. He said, I'm, I'm enlarging. He said, bring your cup. You know, and he, he, he gave me this analogy with this cup here. He said, you know, it's, it's, it's worn. It's tattered. It's, uh, you know, it's well used and stuff. It's got some dents in it. Uh, you know, it, it may leak a little bit, you know, but it's still your favorite cup. You know, you still like your cup. He said, well, I'm, I want you to bring your cup because I'm going to give you a new cup. We're about to do a, a factory exchange on your cup. Amen? And so he said, bring your cup and hold it up before me, and I'm going to give you a new cup. He said, I'm going to refresh what you have here. And and I, I just saw that analogy, and I saw God reforming and reshaping, you know, what he wanted to do in me. And that's the same thing I'm, I'm saying that he wants to do in all of us. Everyone that can, you know, it's, 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 
to the person that will receive what's being said. You know, I heard one of my one of my instructors at Brema make this statement. It's not what people need, it's what they can receive. See, a lot of times, you know, you hear a lot of different things, but, you know, you're not at a, mat- a maturity level to be able to hold it. Amen? Kind of like a toddler being able to eat a steak. You know, they can, they can jump on it and, uh, uh, you know, but, you know, they don't really have enough teeth to get that steak the way they want to. They, they, they'll try now. They will try. If you, if you leave them alone with it, they'll, they'll work something out, you know. They might mess around and choke this little self, you know, because that's, you know, the little babies don't know no better. You know, they just, they, they say, mm, it tastes good. You know, I'm going to eat this, but you don't have any teeth, you know. It's not baby food. Amen? So, God wants to give us something. He wants to put something different in you this morning. Amen? He wants to refresh you. Glory to God. He wants to rejuvenate you. Amen? Glory to God. How how many can receive that this morning? You know, we can all use a little refreshing. Amen? God wants to enlarge your ability to hold things. Glory to God. He wants to insulate you. He wants to, he wants to put some distance between what's going on in the world and you. Amen. So you're not so easily affected. Amen. You know, uh, this little container here, you know, this is a bottle of water and of course the the water inside of it is cool. But it's going to cool off at a much faster rate because there's nothing keeping it cold. Nothing in place to keep it cold. You know, just this little thin plastic. And it, it transfers heat and cold pretty quickly. So whatever's inside of here is going to get hot real fast or it's going to get cold real fast. And God doesn't want us to be affected by what's going on in the world so fast. So he puts, he puts us in an insulation. He puts us in an insulation so that we can stay hotter longer for him. Amen. He wants to. He wants to. He wants you to be preserved. Glory to God in the in the difficulties of life, Amen. And so, He wants us to increase our fellowship time with Him. He wants us to increase our study time, increase your praise and worship. He says, "Rehearse this in the ears of my people. Lay hold on these words. Agree with these words. Open up and receive what I have for you. Hmm. Don't try to micromanage what I'm trying to do. Do not try to micromanage or filter the flow of the Spirit. Trust God and believe that He knows the best direction for you to take. Receive, receive, receive." Say, I receive it, Lord. Because it's it's vitally important that you don't try to, and here's another example that the Lord gave me. A lot of times when you go to the restaurant, you go to maybe Denny's or IHOP or Cracker Barrel or something like that, and they, you know, you get ready to sit down and eat, and they say, can I get you something to drink? And they say, well, you say, yes, I'd like a cup of coffee, please. And the waitress, waiter or waitress comes over with a cup of coffee, and they, they set the cup down, and they fill your cup up. And, of course, they don't, they don't prepare the coffee for you. It's just, you know, the regular black coffee by itself. Well, some people drink it black, you know, straight black, not me. But, you know, of course, if you want it the way you want it, you're going to have to put in the cream. You're going to have to put in the, the sugar or the Splenda or the Sweet and Low or whatever it is you, you like to have in your coffee. Amen? And so the waiter or waitress goes off, they pour your cup of coffee, and they walk off. And, of course, you're left to uh, tend to your coffee and put whatever you wanted in it to make it taste the way that you like. Amen? Okay? And so you've been drinking on your coffee, and uh, the waiter or waitress comes back, and they say, uh, uh, would you like for me to freshen up your coffee for you? And, of course, if you've only taken a couple of sips out of it, you don't want them to pour more coffee on top of it because then you've got to go through the whole sugar cream thing again. You know, so you just say, well, no, you just put your hand over the top of it. You just put your hand over the top of it and say, no, I'm good for now. Amen? Well, why am I saying that? Well, see, when we try to micromanage the Spirit of God, 
we will sit there and we sit there and got our cup up before the Lord and say, Lord, fill me up, make me new, refresh me. And then and then as God is pouring into you what he wants you to be, what he wants you to have, the things that he has for you, you start looking down like, oh, Lord, what you putting in there? You know, uh, patience. Mm, I don't know if I want the patience in here. Kindness, man, I like to get people told. I don't want them. You want to put your hand over that. You want to put your hand over and say, Lord, I don't want, I don't want that in my cup. That's, that's, that's going to taste a little differently than what I want to drink. And see, so God is saying, don't try to micromanage what I'm going to do in you, what I want to do for you and in you. Don't put your hand over the cup. Amen? Take your hand away and let God put in there what he wants to put in there for you. Not only is it going to be good for you, but it's going to be good to the people that you're going to be affecting. Amen? And so as God wants to do a new thing in you, as he wants to refresh you, as he wants to expand you and do things in your life and make you a better person, because we all want to be better, I, I, I'm imagining that I'm looking at, looking at a group of people that want to be better in the things of God. You just don't want to... You know, be the same old grumpy, mean person, you know, all your life. Amen. Praise God. Uh, nobody here. Amen. Maybe out there in Internet land, you know, maybe they're just just happy to stay at home and, you know, be grumpy and pout. But nobody here. Amen. And so, you know, those things that God wants to put in you, let him put it in you. Amen. As this word begins to minister to you, there are going to be things God wants to deal with. Amen. There are things that God wants you to lay aside. The Bible says lay aside every weight and sin. Glory to God. There are things that, you know, they are still impacting our lives in a negative way that God wants to deal with. Amen? And you have to be willing to say, yes, Lord, that's, I'm, I need to change that. And not only is it going to be good for you, but it's going to be the, good for the people that's around you. Amen? It's going to be good t- for your children. It's going to be good for your spouse. Amen? It's going to be good for your co-workers. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So we want to we want to become vessels that God can use. And as we are becoming vessels that God can use, let's look over here at Luke uh, 9 and 48. And of course, I want you to take good notes. You know, as the saying I got from Keith Moore, he said, take good notes because you will be tested on this material. Amen. Glory to God. You will be tested on this material. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to pass with flying colors. Amen. Luke 9 and 48. He said unto them, whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive, whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. And then, of course, Isaiah 43 and 19. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Ye shall not know it. And I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's Isaiah 43 and 19. Now, I'm not here to bombard you with a whole bunch of teaching and preaching. This is, you know, we, we have excellent pastors and Pastor Janie and Pastor Ed, and they have taught us very well in the Word of God. Amen? My main focal point at this, in, in this sitting, in this session, is more impartation than anything because God is, is taking us to another area, another arena. He's elevating us in some things. And in order for us to be elevated, we must be willing to change. Glory to God. You must be willing to change. You know, say to your neighbor, you must be willing to change. You must be willing to change. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, I'm not here to bombard you with a whole bunch of preaching and teaching. And, uh, but I do want to impart some things to you. I believe that this is vital for you to get to the places where God wants you to be. Now, in times past, some of us have been containers of some unsavory things. Lying, deception, hate, wrath, 
selfishness, revenge, lack of self-control, jealousy, having uh, being antagonistic or confrontational, argumentative. But now God is coming to your life. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Man, thank God for Jesus. God is coming to your life and washed you in the precious blood of Jesus. But as time has gone along, some of you have neglected to do what we call preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual brakes are starting to squeal and your spiritual motor is starting to tick because you haven't checked the oil of the spirit. And some, I'm sad to say, their oil has gotten so low that their walk with God has locked up and totally stopped. And you know, we all know somebody like this. They started off on fire for God. Man, they love God. You couldn't, every time the church doors opened up, they were there. But you know, some things started happening. Life started happening, you know. And they, they started to wane. You know, instead of, you know, them showing up when the church doors opened up, they showed up, you know, an hour after the church opened up. Or then they started showing up not at all, you know, because they got distracted. They got weary. They got discouraged. Some things didn't go their way, and, and now it's God's fault. No, it's not God's fault. Jesus has already told us, you know, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And don't think for one second that you're not going to have some problems because we are in a fallen world. And there's a devil in this fallen world, and he hates you. And he hates you even more because you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. So you have an adversary. The Bible says you have an adversary. He hates you, and he's going to do everything in his power to make you fail, to make you fall. To not, not because of you, but because he wants to bring disdain before the Lord. He wants to, you know, make a mockery of the things of God, you know. He wants to show God up, but we're not going to let him do it. Amen. We're going to keep, we're going to, we're going to repent. Glory to God. R-E-P-E-N-T. We're going to repent and we're going to get back in God's face. Glory to God. And we're going to do what he calls us to do. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You done had some situations come up. You done had some things, you know, to, to, to take you back. But guess what? God is still God. The word is still true. And you still got the victory, amen? That does not change. Glory to God. These things are in place, and they cannot be altered or changed, amen? But they can be altered and changed if you ascribe to thinking that it's different than what God said. You want to you wanna agree with God's word. You don't want to be in contradiction to what God's word says. You want to always be on the side where God's word is true for you, amen? You don't want to talk against the word. You want to run. You want. To, you don't want to run away. Run away from the word of God. You want to run to the word of God. Amen. Because there is your answer. There is your stability. There is your mainstay, and stand in agreement with the word of God. Amen. So praise God. These things have been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You have to keep that before you. You know, when the devil says, well, you know, you, you did this, you did that. You know, he said, yeah, devil, I, I did do that. But I repented. Jesus said, as far as the east is from the west, you know, the word says, as far as east, the east is from the west, I will remember your sins no more. I've repented. I'm back in right standing with God. What are we talking about this for? God said he don't remember. what I, I don't have no need to remember it myself. Goodbye. Get back up under this hill because you are still under my feet. Amen? You got to remember, don't let, the, don't, don't let the devil stick his head from up under your foot. Say, hey, you see me down here? I, I can't even hear nothing. Is somebody talking? Oh, oh, and you just go ahead and plant your foot a little firmer on his head, amen, because he is under your feet, amen. He is as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He just act like a little roaring lion. He ain't nothing but a little kitty cat, amen. 
The devil is defeated, amen? Jesus defeated him over 2,000 years ago, amen? And we have the victory in Christ, amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if you'll be, if you'll be diligent and if you'll be faithful, you'll begin to see the special gifts and talents unlock and be revealed in your life. These things will not only be a blessing to you and to your household, but to many others as well. Don't take your hand off the plow. Don't turn around. Say, Lord, I'm going all the way with you. Say that with me. Lord, I'm going all the way. Lord, I won't stop. I'll press on. I'll stay in you. And you stay in me. And I thank you for it now. Amen. Glory to God. Stay in God. Stay in God. I know stuff come up. Everybody's got stuff to come up. Everybody has challenges. You are not, you're not a special case. The Bible said this way. There have no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God, who is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Amen? That's the word. That's where, we, that's, that's, that's where we put our foundation at, right there on the word of God, because that's where we have a sure foundation. Everything else is, sh- is shaky and susceptible to, 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 to crumble and fall under at any moment. But the only thing that has a firm foundation is God's word. Amen? And that's what we want to build our life on. Amen? Now, you begin to pray. And you begin to ask God what your assignment here at Faith and Victory Church is. And he'll tell you. And don't, and, and no, it's not to be the pastor. I'm going to go ahead and help you now. I'm going to go ahead and help you now. Because see, sometimes people show up and they're like, man, I need to take this over. No, no, no. God's already called somebody for that. Amen. That spot's, that spot's already. That's done already. But ask God what he wants you to do. Amen? And he'll tell you. He may need you to help park cars. He may need to help you to set up. He may, we don't know. But you get before God and ask him what your part is. And then after he tell you, you know, sometimes we get, sometimes we get, uh, you know, to thinking, you know, I need to be something else, you know. Sometimes, you know, it's kind of funny, but, but, you know, this analogy still holds true. You know, it's, it's silly for the ear to think it wants to be the hand. You know, the ear cannot be the hand. It, it's not formed properly to be the hand. The foot cannot be the mouth. Sometimes the foot and mouth come together. <laughs> because you mess around and say the wrong thing to somebody. Foot just jump in your mouth. You don't realize it until they give you this look like, oh, what did you say that for? You know? You say, oh, excuse me, let me get this foot out of my mouth. You know? But guess what? We all have an assignment. Amen? And I'll never, I'll never forget, I was in a, uh, in a, uh, a service uh, over at St. Peter's, and Marcerillo was over there. And the Lord spoke so distinctly to me, you know, because... You know, a lot of times we, we want to be something more than what we are. You know, we want to be, you know, something, you know, we want to be the, the top shelf, whatever. And the Lord said, I, I, I need you to be a knee. He said, I need you to be a knee. And, at, and you know, you just think about the role that your knees play. There is no standing without your knees. You know, it's going to be real challenging to walk around without knees. You know, just, you know, it, it, it can be done, but not real well. Amen? And knees are there. They give support. They give stability. They help you to maneuver and do what you need to do. Amen? Just think about the role of the little toe. It's very, it, it seems so insignificant. Why do we even have a little toe? But guess what? If you lose that little toe, you will realize real fast that your walking is greatly hindered because that little digit is gone. 
And that's how it is. That's how it is for us in the kingdom of God. We are vitally important. You know, the ladies, you know, we have, a, we have our morning prayer on Sunday mornings, and I have some really dedicated, wonderful ladies that come and pray every Sunday, you know, and that is vitally important to this ministry. And, of course, you know, it's not just a closed session. It's open to whoever will want to come, you know. But it's vitally important to what goes on here because if prayer doesn't go forth, because prayer is the foundation of any ministry, any ministry that's doing anything worth doing has somebody praying. Amen? And it's vitally important, you know, because things cannot get done. Things have to get done in the spirit before they can translate over into the natural. Things get done in the spirit first, and then it translates over into the natural, not the other way around. It's spirit first, then natural. So when we come in and we pray, we set up the atmosphere for the things that God wants to do in the ministry, in the church, in your personal lives. There are things that doesn't happen in your personal life because we're praying for you. We pray for everybody here at Faith and Victory Church. We pray for the families that are represented here at Faith and Victory Church. Amen? Because we believe that God has a plan for all of us here. It's no, no, no big eyes and little U's. Every, every digit is important. Every digit is important. Amen. Even the smallest of digits. And no matter how big or small you think you are, you are vitally important. Amen. And many times you're not nearly as big as you think you are. You are that little digit more times than not. But amen. Praise God. But don't be weary in your well-doing. Don't, be, don't get weary because, you know, sometimes, you know, things don't happen or you don't get the acknowledgement, you know, and see, sometimes things go on and, you know, it just seems like nobody's appreciative of, of your contribution and this, that, and the other. But remember, you're not just doing this for man's approval. You're doing this for the greater glory of God. Amen. And he is the rewarder. Amen. And he rewards very well. I'm a living witness that God is a good rewarder. Amen. You know, my bills get paid. Things happen for me out of supernaturally happen for me all the time because I am I am cognizant of what my role is here in the earth realm, you know, to be a blessing to people. When we went out to Oklahoma, we had a moment, you know, and see, this is we're still talking about becoming a vessel that God can use. We went to a restaurant um, out in Oklahoma and, of course, we're, we're out there, we're going to Winter Bible, we're having a good time, and this, that, and the other, and, you know, soaking and, and absorbing the word, and then the Lord is, is, you know, reminding me of things, you know, and one of the things that he reminded me of is this spirit, the anointing that's out there in that area because of the prayers that have gone forth through, through the saints over the years, and so out there, it's really, it, you know, I don't know how it is for someone else, but for me, it was re it's real easy to hear God's voice out there. And we went to a restaurant, and uh, my wife, and we were going to go to another restaurant, and then the Lord directed us over to this other restaurant. And we sat down, and the Lord said, I want you to talk to this waitress right here. You know, so our, she, was our, she was our waitress, and she came to the table, and she started taking our order and this, that, and the other. And the Lord said, I want you to say this to her. And so I said, uh, I said, okay, Lord, you know, and, 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 you know, this is not the norm for me. You know, I just, you know, there are times when I have a word of knowledge, but this was a very strong anointing that come up on me at the time because of being out there in that area, because it's, it's, it's for me, it's easier, you know, for the spirit of God, you know, to, to flow. You know, just, and uh, I told my wife, I said, I said, the Lord want me to share this word with this young lady here. And she just kind of looked at me like, okay. And so, we're talking about becoming a vessel that God can use. And so, I said, uh, I said to the young lady, I said, young lady, I said, I don't know you. And you don't know me. I said, but the Lord is telling me to tell you that you need to get your relationship back right with him. 
Now, on the surface, you know, you know, the average 20-year-old, she didn't have, you know, earrings all in her nose. She didn't look like, you know, she just, you know, climbed up out of a casket or anything like that, you know. Uh, you know, you know, some of these young folks, man, they look, they look, they look a something, you know. You're like, whoa, where'd you just come from, you know? But uh, of course, this young lady, you know, she looked like the average, you know, whatever. And uh, and of course, you don't know in and of yourself how how right or wrong you are about what is coming to you from what you would believe the Spirit of God is telling you. Because, see, this young lady, A, well, let me tell you what the word that the Lord said. The Lord said that she needed to get her life right with God. She needed to reestablish her relationship in, in, in her church or find a, a good local church that she can become a part of. And then the Lord went further on to say, you're in a relationship and you're trying to figure out where it's going. So you, you have a young man that you're dating, and you're trying to figure out where this is going. I said, and I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, once you get established back in the church, back into a good local ministry, uh, get your life rededicated back to the Lord, he can begin to talk to you and deal with you concerning the direction that you need to go concerning this relationship. Because you really like this young man. And you'd really like to know if this is going in a positive direction or if you need to do something else. And she just looked like, I was just in the, in the back talking to one of my friends saying that I needed to do something about my relationship with God. And, you know, you, you, I said, young lady, I was sent here just for you. I, I didn't realize it until I sat down at the table and the Lord started talking to me about you, that I was here just for you. And that's how God will use you and me if we'll be yielded, if we'll be open to be a blessing to people. Because that's what we are. We are called to be light and salt. And we want to be a blessing to people as the Lord directs us. Now, God doesn't, you know, every time we, you know, come across somebody new, God's going to speak a word to us. That's, you know, that's, don't, get, don't get spooky. God doesn't do that all the time. But if you're yielded and open, he can't if he wants to. The Bible says as the Spirit wills, amen, as he wants to, allow yourself to be used by God. And that's what we want. We want to be vessels that God can use, amen? All right, so... All right, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to, to wrap this thing up here. But let me share this with you. Any structure or building that's going to stand the test of time must be built on a firm foundation. This ministry is built to stand the test of time. And my job here today is not to promote myself, but to uphold and undergird what's going on here with the pastors, with Pastor Ed and Pastor Jamie. That's, that's my main focus, to, under, to, to hold their arms up as they're doing what God called them to do and help and assist whatever it is they, they want me to do. Amen? So I don't have a problem, you know, if they ask me to minister, if they ask me to go clean the toilets, I go do that. Done that. If they say, Jeff, we need this, I go do it. Because I'm here to assist the work of the ministry. Amen? And that's how we grow, that's how we'll grow here at Faith and Victory Church, being willing, willing vessels that God can use. Amen? And so I challenge each and every individual here to seek, to, seek your, to seek God's face, to open up your heart, to hear the voice of God and in his instruction and direction to you. Because he will talk to you. But you got to be, you got to be, you have to have ears to hear. And you have to have a heart that's open. Amen? And, if, and of course, if you're, if you're one of those individuals who say, well, the Lord ain't told me nothing. Well, a couple things might be happening there. Maybe you don't want God to talk to you. Or maybe you shut God down the last time he tried to talk to you. 
He said, well, I would need you to do such and such. Oh, no, Lord, not so. You know, you go into the, you know, no, no unclean thing has ever touched my lips, Lord. You know, you start trying to, trying to rebuke the spirit of God. Well, don't get into that. Don't get into that. Be a willing vessel. Be open. Allow God to direct you as he sees fit. And you're going to reap the harvest off of your obedience. The Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 19, if we be willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Amen? All right. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are, we are sure, we understand, and we are welcoming of your direction. You said if we be willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Father, I just thank you right now. As this word has gone forth, it will begin to settle and prick the hearts of the people that are the, the, the hearers of this word. Let us not only be hearers, but doers of the word of God. And Father, I just pray right now, every person under the sound of my voice, glory to God, that, that they receive something from you. They receive a, a on time word from you. And Father, I pray that it will not fall on deaf ears. Father, I pray that your word will begin to resonate in their hearts and it will begin to, to sizzle and sear into their hearts and direct them and, and, and propel them in the direction that you want them to go. Father, we thank you for Faith and Victory Church that we are here to, 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 to promote and to usher in the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. He's soon to come, and we want to be ready. We want to be willing vessels. Glory to God. And Father, I thank you right now that your word is coming to pass even right now. And there may be a person in here right now that say, Father, I want to be, I want to be in tune with you. I want to be directed by you. I want to be a yielded vessel. And Father, I just I, I, I know I've, I've gone my own way in times past, but right now, Father, I want to be yielded unto you. I want to be a vessel that you can use if you're that person in this place. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to, to, to signify by just the, the uplifting of your hand to just say, Lord, that's me. Nobody looking around, nobody staring, nobody, nobody trying to see who's doing what. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you in this place and you say, Lord, I want to be... I want to be more in tune with you. I want to be directed by you. I yield myself to your leading. If that's you, just lift up your hands. We're going to pray for you right now. We're going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. We just thank you, Father, that you are touching hearts and, and leading people right now. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, Lord. We just praise you in advance. If there's one, if there's one, glory to God. We see that hand. We see that hand. Glory to God. We see that hand. Glory to God. The, the Spirit of God sees your hands. We see that hand. Yes, yes, yes. Is there another that wants to be included in this? Glory to God. I want to be yielded. I want to be directed. I want to be guided by the Spirit of God. So, so many times we, we're so quick to be guided by Google Maps. Glory to God. But we have a more sure director. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Who wants to be directed by the and led by the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. I see that hand. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Let's 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 be yielded vessels unto the Spirit of God this morning. Glory to God. Father, you see those hands. You saw those hands. Glory to God. Holy Spirit, you see each and every every person in this building. Glory to God. That's heart heart has heart has agreed with this word. Amen. And want to be directed, want to be led by you. Father, I pray that you'll begin to deal with them and minister to them on a, in a level that, that, that they can receive, that they can, they can do what you call them to do. And let us, let us not be weary in our well-doing. And Father, we just thank you for the great change that's taking place, place in the hearts of, the, of your people today. And we just thank you that we'll never be the same after this word. Glory to God. We'll, we'll, we'll have a new, a new vim, vigor, and vitality about our walk with you, that we'll be on fire and not just, just lukewarm. You said we need to be hot or cold and you'll spit us out. Father, help us to be on fire for you. Help us to be, to be zealous about the things of God. And Father, we will be careful to give your name all the praise, all the honor, 
and all the glory for it right now. And everybody in agreement with that prayer said, amen. amen. Praise God. Well, you know, before we close out, um, um, I want to give this invitation. If there's, if there's any sickness uh, or if you need prayer for anything, you know, we're available. You know, I, 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 I can't heal you, but I believe that the, the healer is in the house. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Glory to God. So if there's, if there's anyone that needs prayer for anything, you got any sickness in your body, you got a situation that you, you want us to agree with, you know, now keep in mind now, we want you, to, we want you to, to realize that God does not support foolishness. What does that mean? Well, you know, well, I'm believing God for a husband. Well, well, the guy I'm interested in, he's married. No, let's, let's go ahead and shut that down. Don't come up here wanting somebody else's husband. God's not going to honor that. We can go ahead and speed things along a little bit, you know. Praise God. Nobody in here would do that, but I just have to make that kind of an analogy because, you know, sometimes we pray amiss, amen, and we can't, we, we want you to get what God wants you to have, but God wants you to have things that are decent and in order, amen. But, you know, if you have any sickness or pain in your body, we want to pray for you, we want to agree with you for your healing. You know, the Bible says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. Praise God. So it is the plan of God that you be healed. Amen. And so we're just going to stand in agreement for whatever it is that you need from God. Glory to God. And we're just going to expect God to do it. Amen. Not that I'm so, so great, but, you know, if God will speak through a donkey, certainly he can, he can do something through me. Amen. Praise God. Is there one? Glory to God. Oh, well, come on, sister. Is it for your license? Oh, well, praise God. We need some qualified teachers. Amen. Praise God. Well, Father, we just lift our dear sister up before you. Glory to God. We just thank you for the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Directing her and leading her. And, and, and you said when we come before the magistrates and before the piles, that the Holy Spirit would teach us in that self-same hour the things that we ought to say and the things that we ought to know. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the great teacher. You are the one who guides us and directs us. And we just thank you right now that you are giving her wisdom. You are showing her the answers, glory to God, so she can be what you have called her to be. And we just stand in agreement with you right now. And we just praise God in advance that you are doing an exceptional testing tomorrow, glory to God. You're going to be, you are more than a conqueror. The Bible calls us more than conquerors through him who love us. Glory to God. And we just praise God in advance for it. We thank God in, it, in advance. And we just count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go and be blessed, my sister. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Well, praise God. We just thank God for, for all of you who are, have made it out today. Does anybody need prayer for anything? Because, you know, we not, we not want to get in a rush. Because, you know, we want everybody to get from God what they come for. Amen. You know, people got needs. Amen. We want God to, to meet all needs. Amen. All right. Got one more coming. One more. One more. One more. One more. Yeah, watch step there. Watch step there. All right, Sister Montreal. All right, baby. What can we do, what can we do for you? Well, God can fix that. God can fix that because he loves you. All right? Father, in the name of Jesus, you see that situation. You see what's going on there. And Father, we just thank you right now that you are, you are bringing wisdom into that situation. We just thank you for the Holy Spirit intervening into that situation right now. And Father, we just thank you that the peace of God passes all understanding and shall keep her heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Father, we just thank you right now that things are settling down, that the accusations are stopping. Glory to God. And Father, we just thank you right now she is distancing herself from those individuals that mean her harm. 
she's getting away from them. And you, and you, are, you are moving them. You are moving them, and you're moving her at the same time. And, Father, we just thank you right now that the Spirit of God is intervening and, and sh- taking control, taking control over that situation. And you're turning things around. You are turning things around even right now. And you've given her wisdom, given her understanding. When she would go left, you tell her to go right. When she would go straight, you tell her to turn around and go the opposite direction. And we just thank you for your direction and your leading, even right now. We just thank you for favor. We thank you that the favor of God is over that situation right now. And we just thank you, Father, that you are, you are infusing your favor. When they wanted to do one thing, the favor of God said, no, we're going to do this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And when you get up in the morning, every morning when you get up, you say, Lord, I thank you that you are directing my steps today. I thank you that you are guiding me and helping me to make right decisions, helping me to show me who my friends are and who I need to stay away from. You ask God to do that, and then when he tells you, you do it. You hear me? Bless you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. All right. Does anybody else need prayer for anything? Amen. And let's not let's not get real anxious because one day it's gonna be you. Might be you need some prayer. Amen. And we don't want to rush through your time. Amen. Because we want to be we we want to be sensitive to what God wants to do. Amen. We want to be sensitive because God is He cares about each one of us. Amen. God loves you. Amen. Well, we want to thank all of you for coming and being with us today. We had some some friends to join us online. Glory to God. Uh, and we're so glad that you joined us today. Uh, Lord, we've got Joanna and uh, some uh, some other great folks that uh, have uh, joined, us, joined us this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, we pray that God has spoken a word to you. Amen. And that you got something out of today's message. Glory to God. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, let's go, out, let's go ahead and stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your word. Your word takes precedence over all things. Jesus, you said, I and my word are one. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Glory to God. So we just thank you, Lord, that you've shown up in a great and mighty way. You know, we don't go by what we see on the outside. We go by what's on the, in the spirit realm. And we just thank you that great things have taken place and that the power of God is being administered in the lives of your people. And we just thank you, Father, as we leave from this place, we will never leave your presence. And, Father, we just thank you right now for the Holy Ghost who indwells us, who is our teacher and guide, and will go with us as we go back and forth to our day-to-day endeavors. In Jesus' name, and everybody with that agreement with that prayer said, amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.